Fear does not exist in this kitchen, does it? No sensei! He's so well trained, it's incredible. Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become pork. Today's video is sponsored by the National Pork Board, and we're honoring the glorious meat that is pork by making a chocolate coffee French dip sandwich. This is exciting for me, because not only is pork a lean and healthy protein, great for gain season, but it's also packed with tons of flavor. It makes a great canvas for a variety of seasonings and marinades. And we're going to prove that today by infusing chocolate throughout this delicious and meaty classic sandwich. If you want to check out ways to incorporate pork into your healthy, balanced diet, visit pork.org slash cooking. I'll be breaking this down into three easy steps, so if you're following along at home, check out the time codes right there, and we also got a full recipe in the description. Let us cook. We gotta get our mirepoix chopped up. So mirepoix is the French term for the mixture of carrots, celery, and onion. That's gonna act as the actual base for our pork loin roast. So we're gonna give it a very, very rough chop. We're gonna cut it in about one inches. What? Cut it in about one inches. Cut it in about one inches. That's about one inches. And then we're just gonna take that and immediately throw it into the pan. We're gonna cut onion in half, peel it, and always make sure to have a trash bowl next to you when you're cooking. That way you can just take your onion skins and put them right into the trash bowl. You just edit it, just edit it in. Just edit in a bowl. All right, so we just want a nice rough chop. So what we're doing is we're actually insulating the pork from the direct heat of the pan by laying it on the vegetables, and the vegetables are actually going to kind of perfume the pork and flavor it in a nice base. So now we just gotta drizzle it with about a tablespoon of oil. All right, now for the actual pork. So we're doing a cocoa and coffee rub. Gonna give it like a little bit of mocha flair. So we got some instant espresso powder going in right there, and then we're adding some cocoa powder in there, and then a little bit of chili powder. So the chili powder is gonna give you a little bit of heat, but then the bitterness is really gonna tie in with the flavors of the cocoa and the espresso, and black pepper, because black pepper and pork is, ugh, what a lovely combo. And then we have sugar, a little bit goes a long way, and salt. So we're just gonna stir this up with the tiniest whisk in the world. All right, so before you rub the pork down, you gotta get your finger. You're just gonna go ahead and put your hands in gloves, see how much, see how much easier that was, Ben? All right, so we're gonna take two, three, do three, why two? Why would you stop at two? That'd be crazy. We're gonna take three tablespoons of our rub and we're just gonna dust it all over the pork. So pork loin is great because there is just the tiniest, tiniest fat cap on top that's gonna insulate you from a lot of heat in the oven. Pork loin can stand a lot more heat than tenderloin, which is great when you're adding vegetables and creating a jus and all that. And just get the end pieces. All right, so we're just gonna pop that on top of our vegetables and then a little more for good luck. Good luck, pork! I've right, got our pork seasoned, loaded up on top of the vegetables. So we're gonna pop that in the oven at 425 degrees. Now the misconception about pork is that it has to be overcooked for it to be safe, which is not true. For tender, flavorful, and safe pork, you wanna make sure your trusty meat thermometer reads 145 degrees. You're looking for a beautiful light blush color on your pork when you eventually slice it open for your sandwiches. That is gorgeous. We got a ton of nice browning on that. Browning equals flavor. You got a lot of Maillard reactions going on. But now we have to temperature check it. So you're gonna go ahead and grab your tonges. It's a soft G like in Jif. And then you're gonna go ahead and shove your thermometer through the thickest part, which for a roast like this is right through the center. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna let this rest and then we're gonna move on to the rest of our sandwiches. Don't gesture with tongs, that's dangerous. How dare you? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using the vegetables for making the jus. So I'm gonna take beautiful pork roast and I'm just gonna let that hang out there. I kinda wanna get to that. So, how can I do like that? I don't wanna like I wanna let that pork come up to room temperature before I slice it. That way all the juices have really sort of solidified in there and all the flavor stays packed in. And then you're gonna slice it for your sandwich and it's gonna get a gentle warming in the jus. Hey! Speaking of you, let's do that. All right, so we're gonna start heating that pan on high. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a tablespoon of that leftover, what's this called? Powders. Take a tablespoon of your leftover flavor powder and we're gonna dust that in there. That's actually gonna start to toast up with the vegetables in the bottom of the pan. Then we're gonna deglaze it with some pork stock. So we're just gonna stir that in and then you're gonna smell it. You're, you're not gonna smell it. I'm gonna smell it, get nice and toasty. A little roasty toastiness. And then also we have to start caramelizing onions. For me, French dips means caramelized onions. I don't need that. I'm gonna use a little bit of butter. We're gonna put a little bit of butter in there. We're gonna start slicing our onions for that. I'm also gonna put a little bit of cremini mushrooms in there because I like having a little bit of bite. Onions kind of cook down, get super jammy, and they lose a lot of texture. Trevor, keep, keep. And you're gonna have your trash bowl at your side at all times. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna continue to peel the onions. You wanna get last layer out. Choppy, choppy. That is, why, why? Why does that happen? All right, so the jus is getting nice and roasty toasty. So we're adding three cups of pork stock in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that boil down for about five minutes. And then we're gonna add just a touch, a touch, just a touch of half and half. And that's actually gonna give it a nice little creamy body to it like a latte. So our butter's melted. We're gonna add our onions in there. It, what? Whoops, whoops. So you're gonna take your cremini mushrooms. I'm gonna remove the stems. That way it makes them a lot easier to chop because they can just sit nice and even on your cutting board. 
All right, so we want, again, nice thin little ribbons, but mushrooms have so much fibrousness, fibrousness in them that they're gonna hold their shape. We're gonna go ahead and add our mushrooms to the pot. And then very early on in the mushroom caramelizing process, I like to add my salt and spices. That way it starts to kind of like bleed the moisture out of the vegetables. So we're gonna do another tablespoon. And then you're gonna start stirring that in, making sure the bottom doesn't scorch. This is just gonna hang out for about 20 minutes. You wanna caramelize it on high. If you ever see your onions and mushrooms start to scorch, just add a little bit of water to it, and then that water is naturally gonna cook out. We got our stock going. There is one last step to the stock. We're gonna turn the heat off, and then we're gonna add our half and half. You wanna add the half and half when the heat's off, uh, because if you cook cream with a lot of things like salt, it can start to break. Uh, but when you shut the heating process down, it's just gonna add a nice creaminess to it. We're just gonna strain this off. God, that's heavy. All right, Trevor, stir that pot. Yes, chef. So we're gonna do. Fear does not exist in this kitchen, does it? No sensei! So well trained, it's incredible. So you're just gonna push all the jus out of the vegetables through the strainer, you see some excess moisture coming through, and then we're actually gonna use this both as a sidecar for dipping and also to dip our sliced pork in there just to gently warm it. Eat more onions, huh? No, a mushroom this time. Kid loves mushrooms. I love them. Okay, what's up? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start slicing up this pork. The end piece is gonna have a ton of flavor on it. And you want it as thin as possible. It's like a French dip sandwich. You want the meat to kind of double over on itself. All right, so you remember that light blush color I was talking about earlier? You see that in there? It's not super white all the way through and you can feel the meat is actually super, super supple and tender and the resting process has actually let all the juice stay in there. If you cut it right out of the oven, it's just gonna like spill everywhere. Ooh, and a little snacky. We'll dip it in the jus and Oh my God, that is cooked completely perfectly. No, no, no distractions, no distractions, sandwich time. French dip sandwich, what is it? When was it invented? Uh, I don't know, but everyone who claims to have invented it is sure lying because their stories, they don't add up. Uh, so what I do is I like caramelized onions, Swiss cheese, delicious roasted pork, and then we're gonna put it into this French roll. So you wanna slice the roll in half and you wanna keep it hinged at the edge, which some people claim is not a sandwich if they're not two distinct pieces of bread. And those people are so wrong. Oh my God, they're so stupid. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hollow part of it out because I don't want the bread to obstruct all my delicious pork cheese, caramelized onions, and pork juice uh, trash bowl. So we got a bun hollowed out. I don't wanna toast this because I like when all the juices kind of sop into the bun. All right, so the last step, we're gonna take the pork and we're actually gonna dip it into our jus that we made earlier. And we don't want it to sit there for too long because then it's gonna overcook and we got such a beautiful cook on it. We just wanna get it soaked in its own juices. Pop it in there, give it a one, a two, a how do you do? And then pull it. I don't know why I'm crouched in this stance, but it feels natural. And then we're just gonna lay that down into our sandwich. Just stuff it in there. This is the part where I get all excited. Onions. So we're gonna go ahead and take some of those caramelized onions. Let's give that a nice spread along the top. And then my trick for melting cheese. Are you tired of unmelted cheese in your sandwiches getting all kind of sweaty and gross up in there? Me too, brother, you're just preaching to the choir. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple slices of Swiss cheese and I'm gonna throw them directly in a nonstick pan. There's enough oil in cheese that you can just melt it, stir it around in the pan, get it nice and molten, pour it on your sandwich. And just give it a little wiggle. Give it a nice little flip. The old flip, the old flip and wiggle. All right, and then we're just gonna take that and pour it atop the sandwich. That's a pork French chip. You're gonna go ahead and serve that with a side of jus, and then um, like you eat it. So I'm gonna slice this guy in half, so maybe I can I can share it with my friends. Let's go try and make some friends sandwiches. Oh my gosh, all that pork inside there. It's still super juicy, but we're gonna make it a little bit juicier. And then there's a trick to eating it. You gotta bite in and you gotta slurp like a vacuum. You gotta go. So that's what's gonna happen. Uh, turn off your microphones if you have misophonia. Shout out to the misophonic community. Wow. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Oh. Yeah, give me a second. All that jus. It's got all that pork flavor in there. Plus, there's a ton of that like cocoa and coffee aroma that you get. So you're more getting hit with the smell. There's a ton of spice and salt and deliciousness in the pork. It is incredibly tender. It works so stupid well. So I need to feed someone else. So we're gonna go spork them. That's the new catchphrase I'm trying out. Spork them. Spork that person. Spork them. Let's get to sporking. It's sporking time. We're coming to spork ya. Spork train coming, baby. Woo woo. Welcome to Spork Town. Population you, bro. We're filming. Oh. We're vlogging in here. You just got sport! Oh! Wait, you guys are filming? Hi. Oh, oh we sorry. We have to cover his... <laughs> it's a, sorry, do you it's mind a crossover. Cover Are we being sport? You're being sport right now. Okay, so how this works, you guys have seen the you show. You caught me at a compromising yeah. time. So this is our coffee chocolate pork loin French dip. What? How's it? It's the best thing I've had all day, but I haven't eaten until right now. That's still great. <laughs> a backhanded compliment no, is still no, a compliment. It's really good. It's legitimately good. What about 
What about me? Do you want to get sports? Can I get a sport? Do you mind if I sport you with the spork that I sporked Rhett with? I kind of mind it, but I'm also wanting to get sporked pretty hard. <laughs> I see that there is a... There's a stabby. There's a, there's a toothpick, so here, here I go. You, all right. Oh, okay, well. Keep in mind that I value Rhett's opinion more than yours. <laughs> <laughs> wow, be good at swallow. a big boy. <laughs> yeah, it's a big sandwich. It tastes good. It's good, right? I mean, what are you doing with the rest of the sandwich? That's for you guys. That was a gift, also known as a bribe. Yeah, oh well, yeah, sip me, the shoe. Let me let me get a dip. Let me get a dip before you before you sip. Let me get a dip before you sip. <clears throat> it's got coffee in it. It's wow. got coffee and chocolate. Is it oh. gonna keep me up? Oh yeah. Hey guys, subscribe to our channel. We no, got a vlog channel. Subscribe to my channel. I have a cooking channel. They're already watching your channel. I know, but keep subscribing. Thank you so much to the National Pork Board for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn how to incorporate pork into your healthy diet, go to pork.org slash cooking. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you make this dish, hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen, using hashtag dreams become food. Got another Snack Smash coming out next week. Cooking recipes every week. See y'all later. Hashtag dreams become food. Hey, I made it up.